Hello everyone and welcome back to another Astroneer circuitry video, this time covering the topic of multiplexers or MUX gates. Now as you can see, the circuit over here is a little bit complex and relatively repetitive, and this is all due to the nature of how a multiplexer functions. So on the screen we have an image coming up of a multiplexer, a circuitry diagram of it, where we have two inputs A and B coming in from the left, a input coming in from the bottom called SELECT or SEL, and then one output going to the right just labeled OUT. And this is a two to one multiplexer because we have two inputs A and B being selected between with our SELECT and then output whichever one that we select. So the inputs we can have can be any number of bits, meaning that we could have two bit inputs, three bit inputs, four bit inputs, but each input needs to be the same number of bits, otherwise the MUX is not gonna function properly. As to the number of inputs that we can have, it can be any power of two. Because if you think about it, our select input, if it's one bit, we can choose between two inputs. So our inputs are two. If we have two bits for the select input, we can select between four different inputs. So our inputs can be two, four, eight, 16, and so forth. Um, and granted, you don't have to have them filled up, but that's the maximum that amount that you can choose between when you have a MUX gate. So if you take a look at what's going on over here, we have our four bits four times. So we have four four bit inputs and we have one output. So this MUX overall is called a four bit four to one MUX. So we can choose between four different inputs that are each four bits with a selector. So as per usual, we use an RTG. We don't need an RTG, we just need to make sure that we have power so we could easily use a different source if necessary. Once again, as per usual, we also have our switches labeling our inputs. Uh, I didn't have enough space to set work lights in, but you can definitely see that when a power switch is triggered to let power through, it turns green. When it's not, it's just dark. So this zeroth input is 1001 because we are indexing from, bin from indexing from zero as binary does. That's why we have our zeroth input, our first input, our second input, and our third input. Those are the metrics that we're gonna be using throughout the rest of this video. And generally in all computing, you should use those metrics. Now over here we have our select. So our select really starts right over here. This is just to get power here as, as I have discussed. Um, and you might recognize this setup from either the gate video or the risk computer, as this is how I've done all of my indexing. Because when we have our zero channel coming through, we need to do stuff. But if we flip this switch, power comes through here, flips this switch off. So we essentially now have a one. Zero, one, zero, one. Zero. That's generally the operation here, and I've kind of discussed how these work a few times. So this is our zero bit of our selector, and this is our first bit of our selector. So right now this is a one, this is a zero. They handle the exact same. So this is more of the body of the multiplexer, where we have our first input, our, or sorry, our zeroth input, our first input, our second input, and our third input. And you can see that each of them have three switches, which if you remember back to the circuits video, switches in series act like an AND gate. So with three in, in series, we have a three input AND gate where power only flows through if all three of the conditions are met. So what exactly are those conditions? This first set of switches comes directly from our inputs. So our input of 1001 corresponds to switches 1001. And that's exactly how all of these first set of switches work because these just handle our inputs and if we don't have our input we don't really want power flowing through it in the first place so that's the reasoning behind that the next set of switches our second and our third set are corresponding to the zero and the first bit of our selector so because this is our zeroth input we want this to be selected when we when our selector is zero zero and when our zero bit comes through we trigger the first set from the zeroth location of the selector bit. When our zero is on our first location of our selector bit, we see that this also triggers the third set of switches. So only if we have the input selected and we have the zero channels triggered, do we have power flowing through. And that's the exact case that we see here. If we were to take a look at say our first input, this only triggers when our selector is zero one. So once again, the zero of our first selector bit triggers the last set of switches but then a one this time of our zero selector bit actually triggers the second set of switches. And once again, the first is triggered by the input. So only if we have the input, only if we have a one in the zero location and a zero in the first location. So a one, a zero one on our selector. 
that's how we determine if we allow our first through. And then the same can be said for the second and third input. If our selector is a one zero or for our third, if it's a one one, then we allow power through. The last bit over here is a series of, of uh, splitters. And the reason that we do this is because once again, thinking back to the circuitry video, these are OR gates. So these basically take power from any source. And as long as we have power coming to it in general, we allow power to flow through. So in this case, we don't really care which bits are selected and where they're selected from. We only care if we have power in general. So this handles our first bit, second bit, third bit, and fourth bit. Sorry, zero, first, second, and third. This is not inputs, these are bits. So this set of splitters takes in the zeroth bit, it takes in the zeroth bit, the zeroth bit, and the zeroth bit. And this is because this is our zeroth bit. Then this one takes in our first, this one takes in our second, and this one takes in our third. And this is because this is, again, we wanna be able to select the bits and have it display properly what we're looking at. And the OR gates handle that perfectly fine. So we can start to actually take a look at how this starts to function in a general scape. So right now we have 1001 selected because we're at 00. If we were to switch to 01, remember our input is now 1010, we can see that it is 1010. Then if we go to our third bit, which is 11, we see that it's 1000, or sorry, 0111. We see that we have 0111. And that's generally the operation here. Um, so our second bit is labeled as 1011. We can change this to say, uh, 0100. And then if we go select our third bit or our second bit by doing 10, we see that we have 0100. So that's the general operation of a MUX gate. Um, I will try to get a little bit of a circuitry diagram out there for you guys too, just because I know some people might want to uh, make this themselves. However, I am going to do something a little bit differently this time. So in the description below, I actually am going to post a link to this world save file. Now this save file also contains the random number generation, the circuitry tips, as well as the gates. So you can certainly play around with any of those if you wish, but over here, this is where you'll find the MUX gate setup. Um, so that kind of rounds out the video for today. Uh, again, if you have any questions, by all means, hit me up anywhere. You can certainly reach out in any way that you feel comfortable with. Um, I do primarily stream on Twitch, as I've mentioned many times, but I am starting to post a little bit more circuitry stuff, and I might also be starting a new playlist very soon for you guys. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed the video. Uh, by all means, if you like the channel and you like the content, feel free to subscribe. Um, I also, again, primarily stream on Twitch, so certainly drop a follow over there if you would like to catch some content live. I do a lot of circuitry building on screen while I'm streaming, and it's always fun to interact with some people while doing so. But for now, that ends the video as we have seen. Have a good rest of your day, and hopefully we'll see you in another one.